All right, welcome to our very first live edition of Snacky Tunes. I'm one half your host, Darren Bresnitz, a finger on the pulse. I'm the other half, Greg Bresnitz. Uh, welcome to Snacky Tunes Live. Uh, yeah, for those who don't know, uh, Snacky Tunes is our food and music pop culture show that we do one week out of the incredible Robertas for Heritage Radio Network. We feature chefs, culinary personalities, sommeliers, winemakers, DJs, musicians, anything that we are digging that week or that month with food. And we're very, very excited today to have two of our favorite people, uh, Chef Richard Blaze from Atlanta and Robert Singh from Brooklyn. Guys, welcome. Hello. Hey, what's going on? You know, there's a lot of parallels between the starting out in the music world, whether you're writing or playing in a band, and starting out in the chef world, where you're cooking or running a restaurant. And Blaze, uh, your very first job was at a very notable restaurant, uh, the Golden Arches, if you will, McDonald's. Yes, I'm and very proud of that. You worked the fish station? Yeah, well, I was the poissonnier at McDonald's, <laughs> which poissonnier means fish cook in, in a, a, a serious French kitchen. So yes, I was the poissonnier at McDonald's, which is very prestigious it's at a hamburger restaurant that only has one seafood item yeah. on the menu. And my first batch of filet of fish that I sent out, I forgot to put the top bun on uh, it. So I was being avant-garde and creative way before. Yeah. You are deconstructing I was, food. I was deconstructing <laughs> the filet of fish before. I knew I was going to be playing with liquid nitrogen and stuff like that. And uh, Amrit, uh, same question to you about getting your start um, at writing for music and getting involved. Um, what was it like and you know, when did you decide that just writing and scribbling was going to be an actual career and starting to get a focus point of view? Yeah, I mean, well, as, as Greg mentioned, I have a law degree, and um, that was really just to satisfy my parents, who, <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> as immigrants, uh, you know, they wanted me to safeguard my future in some way, so I did it. I went there for them, but I was a musician. I never thought about writing about music, but I always played music, and I was always a r writer. Like, I was a, uh, the editor of the National Law Journal at law school, for instance. When I moved to New York, it was to make music after graduating from law school, and I was like, working as an attorney, too. And attorneys don't have a lot of time to make music. And they do get money, though. So I found myself going to a lot of shows and writing emails to friends about the shows and the scene that I was discovering. And my friends, I think they were just sort of like, wow, you know, after, they, at first they were like, cool, it's nice to hear what you're doing, Amrit. And then after like the 10th or 15th email, they're like, you should just start your own website. <laughs> and I was like, that's really sweet. And I think at, it was partially to kind of encourage me to go in this new direction, but also probably to like cut down on the number of emails they were getting yeah. from me. It was a little bit like, have a place, we'll go there, and we'll just read your reviews. And, um, and that's what I did. And then soon thereafter, I actually submitted one of them to my favorite site at the time, which was called Stereogum, founded by a man named Scott Lapatine, who's a content genius. And uh, he was kind enough to post my, uh, my review, and we just started up a relationship very quickly. And before I knew it, I was reviewing shows for him. What was the name of the original blog? Uh, it was called Village Indian. Yeah, because yeah. I lived in the village and I was Indian. <laughs> so I was formerly Indian. <laughs> uh, so, Blaze, when did you first decide that uh, cooking was not just going to be um, fried fish and it was going to be your career? Um, I mean, I think a couple restaurants passed the, the McDonald's phase, you know, where... Um, what did you go to? What was the, what's the progression? Wow, I'm trying to remember. It was like from, you know, the, the prestige of McDonald's to like a place called Fuddruckers. Nice. Right, to a place called Friendly's. Wow. Have you, have you heard of these places? Like, yeah. these were all like just... I'm embarrassed to say that. Where I don't know the end, names. Happy, of these happy ending Sunday. The, uh, this is on Long Island in New York. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 So I grew up Long Island chains. Yeah. You know, Strong Island then. Strong Island. That's right. right. To refer to Represent. it as. Um, and then, you know, I just kind of realized it was, it was really more of the camaraderie. And then I sort of took a job at a local steakhouse. And I started seeing a lot of the cooks that were wearing these jackets with uh, green print, their names on it. And I thought that was really cool. I was wearing like a dirty T-shirt, and they were, we were wearing these cool. And they were from the CIA, the Culinary Institute, mm -hmm. up in uh, Hyde Park near Poughkeepsie in New York. And I was like, yeah, that's what I, th these guys are cool. It turns out they probably weren't really that cool. They were just, you they know. Had the I mean, they had yeah, the jacket. They had a cool jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So CIA to Fuddruckers. So, yeah, that's so that it. was like, yeah, I'm going to go. I think I can get into this. And I, like, I really love the rush of working in a restaurant, you know, like that. I guess it's similar to like mu music. You know, like you, you're on stage and like there's just this this you know the pulse of it. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's when that's when I sort of got the, the fever and went to school. And then the rest is uh, you know we're still writing the history, I guess. But we're that's that's where we're at. So uh, to get back to the start, there's this one story that uh, you shared with me about when you were working over at the French Laundry, and which is probably one of the best restaurants in America, if not the world. But um, you told me you would, you would bike to work and, and be listening to music, and if you could talk about your experience there and how that was really the start of your journey to being uh, uh, you know, an international chef. 
I mean, you know, the French Laundry, again, this is like my, my first super serious, you know, three Michelin star restaurant. And I took the position, you know, you were saying earlier, I took the position for no money. Mm -hmm. Like, they're like, fly out here and spend all your money and come out here and you can work for us for, you know, six months for free. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> the best <laughs> chef in the world. Of course I want to work for free, right. 90 hours a week. I want to do that. So I went out there and I bought a bike. I bought like a $50 bike from right. a sous chef. It was Huffy? a Schwinn. No, it was a oh, Schwinn. Schwinn. Oh. And um, I'm not a bike rider guy or anything like that. And I, of course, I got a little apartment, way too expensive, 10 miles from the restaurant. And uh, then it's like the story like your grandfather might tell you. Like, then I drove my bike to work every day and I left, I would leave the house at like 3.30 in the morning in Napa Valley during like uh, rainy season, which if you've been out there, it rains every day, exactly at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> um, and I, I, I mean, literally didn't have the, a raincoat or anything and I'd throw a, a garbage bag on me and I, would, I had a Walkman at the time. This is how long ago this was, right? So my favorite bike riding story is one of these days, I'm going guys. over, right? I'm, I'm riding this Schwinn. Can you picture this, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And, and I got my Walkman on and I hit a train track sideways and I totally wipe out. <laughs> And like scrape my knee up and the tire, the flat, the flat tire, the police had to come. They're like, what are you doing? And they didn't even believe me. They had to drive me to the restaurant, ask Thomas Keller if I really worked there. <laughs> it was really bizarre. But what I remember most about that is listening to Huey Lewis in the news, I want a new drug. <laughs> when I wiped out. I will never, when I hear that song now, it's like, we, ah, You, you yeah. get the flashbacks? Yes. It was the radio, by the way. It wasn't like I had that cassette. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you feel, uh, and I guess this goes both to you, that uh, it's a bit of your mission to make things better, whether it's food or writing about music and putting that challenge to other people about making them challenge themselves and have a better, you know, content creation? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you're always trying to set an example. And I, I mean, I feel lucky that I've been able to carve out some sort of a niche inside the space that feels very specific and particular to me. And that's something that took some time, like sort of like the idea of finding your voice, which I'm sure as a, as a cook, that's something that, you know, you've worked on. And once you kind of get a sense and you start to see where you're trying to go and like what it is that you can contribute in a way that's different than everybody else, which honestly is taking a very, it requires taking a very honest assessment and inventory of your strengths and weaknesses and actually using those weaknesses to your benefits. You know, like when I first started out writing about music, it's like I looked up to certain music critics that I thought were just completely brilliant and had this encyclopedic knowledge of, you know, records that I had never even listened to yet. And I was like, wow, I really just want to be like them. And after two years of really trying and developing some skills, I was like, I'm never gonna be that guy, but that's fine. I'm gonna shift and kind of look around at what I'm doing at this point that's different than everybody else. And I'm grateful for my weaknesses ultimately for that reason too. So, so I guess to answer your question specifically, it's like I'm just trying to one up myself with every year, you know? Which is, you know, just because I'm not, you know, I'm inspired by what other people are doing, but it's not like, you know, a competition necessarily.